All right, so when we talk about um, the foundational concept of how we sense the world, um, you know, certainly you think about all the senses individually, so vision and smell and taste, um, and those are definitely really important, and we'll go into those individual senses in future videos. But in this one, I wanted to talk about a general concept that we're going to see um, in all of those different sensory modalities, and that concept is sensory adaptation. Okay. And so what, what is sensory adaptation? So let's, uh, let's look at it from a neuron's perspective real quick. So here's our neuron. And let's say this is a visual neuron. So um, yeah. visual neuron. And so we're going to talk uh, in detail about how we're actually going to get light to this neuron and cause this neuron to respond. But let's just right now skip all those steps and look at how this neuron is going to respond. Okay? And remember, neuron responses um, are in action potentials. So we're going to measure the voltage of the neuron over time. Okay? And so if, let's say this is, uh, there are all sorts of neurons in the visual system, but let's say this one is just activated uh, when it's light, likes light conditions. Um, so let's say first it's in the dark, so not going to be firing too many action potentials. And at this time here, we're going to turn on the light, turn on the sun. Um, okay, so here this neuron is going to sense uh, the light through a multitude of pathways, and we're going to get an action potential. And not only are we going to get one, but it's going to be coded in the frequency, so we're getting action potential after action potential. But, you know, as time goes on, um, you know, it's, it's getting used to the light, and so it's going to fire fewer and fewer action potentials over time. And so that decrease in frequency is this neuron adapting to these new light conditions. Um, and this is, this is actually really important uh, for how we sense the world. So, if, so why don't we just have you know, each neuron respond to an absolute light level? Well, it turns out we actually experience a huge spectrum of uh, light or lumineers of light, that's the unit of measurement of brightness, um, every day. So from when we wake up in the morning, uh, you know, 6 a.m. to start studying, it's still dark outside, um, to when we're eating lunch, uh, you know, outside in the sun, it's actually a, a huge spectrum. So if we're going to respond to every absolute light level, we need to have so many neurons in the visual system that either we'd have to, to take up the room of all the other senses, we don't want to do that, um, or we'd have to narrow down the visual system um, and we wouldn't have as good of visual acuity um, or we wouldn't be able to respond as well to changes in light. And it turns out uh, that in fact it's changes in light that are really important to us evolutionarily. So, you know, maybe it's not so important that you know the absolute light level of, uh, you know, being outside during lunch, but if a cloud comes over the sun and the light level changes suddenly, it's important that we're alerted to that so we can pull out the umbrella or go back inside. Um, and so this isn't just true in the visual system, so let's imagine now that this is an auditory neuron, so same neuron, but I'm going to call it auditory now. Okay, and let's imagine you're in the MCAT exam room, and this really annoying tone starts going off. So, um, so you're in the room, and we're going to look at voltage over time of what is now an auditory neuron, and so it's doing fine, being pretty quiet. Let me focus on the test. Um, but right here, the annoying tone begins. Okay, so this neuron initially is going to pay big attention to this change in the soundscape. Okay, so it's going to fire really rapidly. But as the tone goes on, maybe it's not so important that we pay attention to the tone. It doesn't seem to be alerting us to anything, and we might want to get back to the test. So this neuron is going to adapt and slow down its firing, and you can go back to taking your MCAT without having uh, this sensory information sort of at the forefront, because this neuron can adapt 
uh, to changing conditions. So in general, all, all of our neurons, um, our, all of our sensory systems are set up to respond to these changes in the environment because that's, that's what's going to end up being super important to us. And it helps us filter out things like annoying tones that happen consistently that we don't need to pay attention to. Um, but can you think of anything in the sensory system that we might not want to adapt to over time? Well, one example of that is going to be um, is going to be some of our sense of touch. So now some things with touch you definitely want to adapt to. So if you're laying down in bed, initially you sort of feel like the bed and sheets against you, but you you don't continue to focus on that consciously over time so you can go to sleep. So that's a case in touch when we do an adaptation, just like all other senses. But imagine, here you are, and you're carrying a really hot pan in your hands. Um, and in this case, you actually want continued information about how this hot pan is being held in your hand. So if, if your sense is adapted, so um, if you, here's the thing of the pan, um, so you're not firing, here you begin firing um, with high frequency, but as you get out here, um, you start firing with lower frequency, you're no longer really aware of how hard you're holding the pan in your hands, and um, without that information, you're liable to, to drop the pan, and then you get burned, and you are sad, and that's no good. Okay, so in this case, for a sense of touch, we do have an adapting system, but we also have, in the same nerves, a system that does not adapt. So in this case, the stimulus comes on here, and these neurons are just going to continue firing away at the same rate until the stimulus goes off right here. Okay, and then we'll go back down to baseline. So um, non-adapting systems are definitely important in the sensory system for some select things. But um, for most of our sensory systems, what is going to be really important to us is to be able to detect changes in the environment um, and we're going to be able to do that through sensory adaptation. So I just wanted to introduce you to this general concept because it's something we're going to see again and again in all the sensory systems.